Braun, uh, Braun Arbor Cultural Consulting in Hood River. Uh, here it is January 2013 and we're dealing with a major bark beetle outbreak. Uh, from last year to now I've noticed a, that is from 2011 to 2012, I noticed a, a great increase in infested ponderosa pine, probably fivefold in the mid-Columbia area. And so next year it'll probably be worse before it gets better. So my idea is we should find these trees and deal with them this winter before the beetles come out next spring to move on to more trees. There are beetles under the bark of all the red trees you see. If you look in the background, you can see several right here. The thing with uh, this bark beetle, they start in the top and work down. So a big oh. tree could still be green on the bottom, but probably next year they'll get the rest of it. What, what makes a direct control effort difficult, what that means is you remove the infested trees in the winter before the, the beetles can emerge and pile and burn or chip or burn for firewood or, or sell to a mill that, that material that's infested to get it off your property and dealt with. Uh, the problem with that is most owners only notice the red trees. If it's just a small amount of the crown infested or sometimes a tree that's infested late in the year in September, this time of year still looks kind of green. It's kind of yellow green. Mm -hmm. You're thinking, oh, maybe it'll come back. No, mm -hmm. those will turn brown uh, by the spring. Mm -hmm. And so you don't want to leave those. If you're going to sweep through, you want to get them all. The problem is you get a three foot diameter, 120 foot pine tree that's fully infested. There might be 10,000 beetles in that tree. Yes. And if they fly off to the tree nearby, a lot of them are going to end up on that tree and there'll be plenty to, to overcome any defenses of the tree, even if it's very healthy. Mm. So okay. in an outbreak, any tree is fair game. It's whatever is nearby is a high likelihood of being infested. Next. The general thinking on any bark beetle, not just this one, which is the California five spine Ips beetle, Ips paraconfusus, there are other bark beetles that attack pine and fir. It's just to keep your trees healthy, uh, keep the stand thinned out, a little space between the trees. Mm. Same thing you would do for fuel reduction. Uh, if you see damage like from ice storms, then you want an arborist to cut out the broken limbs or the broken top mm -hmm. because they'll go into that first and eat that and then move on to the tree. And the ice storm we had a year ago, almost exactly, we feel both me and the county forester, Doug Theses over in the Hood River, feel that that helped really goose the population and increase it because in that ice storm was throughout the mid-Columbia Gorge mm -hmm. from Cascade Locks to the Dalles. Right. And it broke a lot of trees and provided a lot of really good food. Right. So if you have a tree that you're thinking is likely to be sick, is there right. a way to um, assess the tree as a homeowner and determine whether it has an infestation or not? Yes. I would say um, most homeowners would be able to tell the difference between, say, normal branch death and a beetle infestation. When the beetles get in the tree, they tend to kill a whole cluster of limbs right to the trunk all at once. Hmm. The natural branch mortality you see in a mature tree is just a scattered limb, one or two per year you might mm -hmm. notice. Looking up the hill uh, this way, there's a small tree that Teresa noticed was kind of uh, a little yellow green looking. Thanks. And we're wondering about that. So uh, one tool I, I use is to bring binoculars and you look for pitch tubes on the trunk. There's a little wads of resin and sawdust that come out of the trunk uh, when the beetle bores into the bark and digs galleries under the bark in the foam, the inner bark layer, and lays eggs. They, they push the resin and, and frass, chewed up foam, out of the tree. And it makes a little lump with hmm. a hole in the center, just the diameter of the beetle. Oh, interesting. If you look closely here, you see some fine sawdust on the bark. Right here, and there's a little bit here, yeah. and there's some over here, and there's some down here. <laughs> so the evidence just of in a, a just beetle. in just in a square foot or two, there's five or ten different holes where the beetles went in the tree, and so that tells me it's a goner. Okay. If there were only five attacks in a large tree. But here in just a short piece of trunk, there's, a, there's five to ten. And you notice the crown was a little yellow. Yeah, and the needles look kind of desiccated right. or dry. So this tree was infested probably in the fall, so it didn't turn brown. Mm. If it was infested in July, then it went through three months and it, it cured and turned brown. 
So this tree is dead. It just doesn't know it yet. Mm. There's just enough sap to keep the tree's needles kind of green. Um, we can take a look under the bark. You can see there's a little bit of foam that's still normal, but this part here is brown. And you can even smell it. It smells kind of fermented. It doesn't smell right. Oh, that. It doesn't smell like fresh pine sap. The flow, this is the phloem, the under layer of bark. It's nice and juicy and white in here. But this is a gallery area. This is one here. There's one over here. So every six inches or so, there's a set of galleries up and down this tree. And so it was inoculated with that stain fungus. So the tree's a goner. Mm. There we go. So there he is, bark beetle. Mm. In alcohol. So he's he, he's he went out singing happy. sea chanties right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I feel a little better about killing him then. At least he went out happy. You know, so they're not very big. No. Not a little. But wow, they they don't waste any time. That's no. what we've seen. Okay, well, so that's the answer on this tree. I need to take it down. Before... You know, it didn't seem obviously dead. Right. Until you look up close and you see the sawdust. Mm -hmm. Now, if it was green below on a bigger tree, you might see that, like the one just down the hill. You won't see pitch tubes or sawdust on the lower trunk of the tree down there. Mm -hmm. Right. It's just in the top. But the okay. top is such a classic, you know, brown whole top fading. Yeah. It no doubt is the bark beetle in mm -hmm. that tree. This tree behind me has all the different colors. It's green below, and it's, it's a nice red color at the top. And you notice there's a bunch of limbs. In fact, the whole top is all kind of the same color, all those limbs. That tells me I'm absolutely sure that's a bark beetle that got in this tree. And it's most likely this California five spine yips, because they start in the top like that. If you're trying to suppress the local beetle population, you really have to cut the tree down. Uh, something infested to this degree, it's not worth trying to save it. You have a little short snag. And the, the problem is too, the beetle, as I said earlier, brings in a, a fungus that blocks up the sapwood, it stops the sap from flowing, and that's what kills the tree. Mm. So that's been injected into the tree. It's been inoculated with this pathogenic fungus that stains the wood, kind of a grayish blue color. And so even if you cut out the dead limbs, the tree will probably die anyway. Here we have a, a bigger tree that's completely red-brown, the needles. And uh, I just did a little poke with the axe, and sure enough, they've colonized it right to the ground. Wow. Now what's actually interesting here is these galleries are not Ips beetles. These are western pine beetle. Oh. Because they're bigger galleries? Well, I can tell by the pattern. They're really Interesting. Uh, squiggly, for want of a better word. Mm -hmm. And the galleries you see here are just the adults where they laid eggs. If you look carefully, these tiny little lines coming out that disappear mm -hmm. are the larval galleries and they disappear. That's because they feed in the outer bark to finish their development. Oh, wow. The Ips, pine, the Ips paraconfuses, or California five-spine Ips, just feed in the phloem layer. They don't go into the outer bark at all. Hmm. And so you'll see the larval galleries coming out sideways from the egg galleries. In western pine beetle, you just see where they just begin to start. And here's a dead adult right here, or maybe just cold, not moving. Western pine beetle? Yeah. Let's, I'm gonna zoom in on him. Okay, so here's a large pine that is still alive low down, but you notice the top is broken, and it's broken and fell. And that was from the January ice storm in 2012. Here we are a year later. Here's the top on the ground next to me. And it was infested with bark beetles. You can see the stain on the end. And you can see the little tiny holes in the bark right there. That's an exit hole. They're much more numerous than the initial entry holes that might be spaced out every six inches to a foot on the, on the bark. Mm. The exit holes might just be an inch or two apart all over the tree. 
and they're just at random spots and the, the beetles bore out through the bark, whether it's thick or thin, to, to escape. The entrance holes are typically in a crevice because the bark's thinner. The, the beetle lands in the tree, crawls into a crevice, and bores in. Hmm. So that's how you can tell they've already left this tree. They're no, they're, so there shouldn't be any beetles in here. We can pull the bark off. It'll just show that the inside was all consumed. Yeah. You can see that. Mm -hmm. In fact, here's uh, all these these fine little galleries that are parallel. Mm. Those are the larval mines or the larval galleries, where they they ate through the phloem coming out from one of the adults egg galleries and finished their development and popped out through the bark. <laughs> so that's how you know it was Ips beetle. And just over here, there's a whole bunch of little stumps. All these little trees right nearby the top were infested by the beetles that emerged and just went right into the nearby trees a few feet away. So that's kind of a classic uh, scenario where you get some breakage, the beetles clue into that. What they do is they can smell the fresh oozy resin and the broken wood and uh, that just says food. But in a standing tree, the underside of the bark is a pretty cozy, dry, relatively warm place to be. Mm. So in a standing dead tree that has these brown needles, there are hundreds or even thousands of beetles just hanging out, uh, waiting to come out. Probably depends on the exposure, meaning south or north side of a hill, but they'll come out anywhere from late May to late June, hmm. or on into July. And on, a, on an optimal site, they might even have a second generation that emerges in the fall and reinfest trees in the same year. Wow. Well, if you have a pile of firewood like this, it's important to burn it in the winter, or at least peel the bark off and burn the bark. That'll, that'll deal with the beetles. And uh, the branches and tops you'll want to burn or chip. Um, especially, I think, if you mix the brown and the green limbs and have a guy run it through a chipper, then it should um, compost because the green limbs will cause it to hot compost. Oh, okay, nice. But just mechanically chipping or is going to kill most of the beetles. It's better than not doing anything. In fact, you can take the bark and turn it upside down. And you have woodpeckers and chickadees and nuthatches going after it to, to look for insects. Okay. Uh, woodpeckers and, and those sorts of insect-eating birds in the winter clue in to broken trees and, and loose bark and that kind of thing as a place to find food. Okay. So that's a non-smoky alternative. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah.